Good morning. Good morning. If you are able, please rise as we share the matter in words of greeting and call to worship. Immediately following, we will be lighting the act of together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the first Sunday of Advent, the first day of our journey towards Christmas, the day that marks our preparation for the miracle and wonder to come. We light this first candle of Advent, the candle of hope, that reminds us of God's promise that awaits us. We light this first candle of Advent, the candle of hope, as an invitation for each of us to dream of Emmanuel, of God with us. Let every voice proclaim this hope that is so needed now. Thanks be to God. Amen.
morning, and welcome to all of you who have gathered here physically today, and also to you who are gathering all by your device on Facebook or the church website. God works in mysterious ways, as we've said before, especially through willing people. Um, yes, we are allowed 25 people to worship in the service space today, uh, but through technology, we are able to, uh, to uh, touch the religious needs of others beyond uh, this space, and uh, we are grateful for those, uh, Debbie and others, who have been helping with technology, and, and uh, we are so, uh, so grateful for that. Day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, thank you to Lady Norston, who is acting as Cantor, and she and Judy today are providing music through the service. We appreciate that very much. And today also is the first Sunday of Advent. You can see there are decorations, and we, we thank Catherine and Remy for coming in and doing that decoration earlier in the week. Uh, we appreciate that very, very much. Um, there are other things that are going on. I've got quite a few things to mention. We continue to collect non-perishable goods uh, from the local food bank, but I'll mention some of that in a few moments. First, uh, two unhappy announcements, and I will make those. Um, Elaine Hiscock uh, passed away on November the 10th, and so continue to keep her family in your thoughts and in your prayers. Um, a graveside uh, service will take place in the spring of 2021. Um, because of COVID restrictions and also as for her wishes. Also, unfortunately, um, in the late part of this week on Thursday, uh, Mr. Evan Harvey passed away. Please keep uh, Ed's uh, children and uh, extended family, grandchildren, and Elizabeth in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we'll hear more about what their uh, desires are, but it's most likely that they will want to have uh, some kind of service celebrating his life once we're able to do that more properly after the COVID things pass. Some of the other things that are going on. Um, you heard last week about White Gift. This is also a day on which you are invited to bring things for White Gift. Um, donations of food and money only. Uh, toys are not being collected this year because of the, uh, the COVID situation. It's very difficult for them to manage all of those kinds of things, so money and food are what are needed. Uh, family Christmas baskets also. We've taken on um, an extra family this year uh, to provide baskets to, um, and uh, certainly the CAC Food Bank is uh, struggling at this time, so anything that you can bring in is uh, certainly welcome. But those baskets, uh, there are uh, items that are listed on the outsides of them, um, things that you could bring in that are practical donations, and uh, please uh, uh, take a slip if you haven't already, and you can put them in the uh, brightly colored boxes in the back. Uh, CAC Food Bank, um, they also need help, so if you have other things that you would like to uh, give towards that, uh, there are baskets that you come into the church and uh, place those items there. One of the things that uh, is continuing this year, and we won't be having the mailbox and so on, it's paper goods and touching uh, paper with hands and so on, um, but we are going to have a memory tree. It will go up on the 10th of December, and um, uh, Wayne has forms that you can fill out with him, or you can send an email to me directly uh, to the office, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, your family member is remembered. Uh, recall that um, a blue light is for someone who has passed away, and a white light is for somebody who's going to be away and you're going to miss them. So remember that those options uh, for the remember tree are there also. There is no charge for that. It's something that uh, we just do as a, as a church family. Um, a few other things. Um, the, uh, the white gift uh, deadline for CAC and so on is extended to December the 6th, so if you forgot something today, that's okay. You have till the 6th to do so, something with it. And the pink envelope for white gift that is for uh, mission and service will be collected on December the 20th later in the month. So you'll get a reminder about that one later on. Lessons and carols will be held on December the 13th. And the Sunday School pageant um, They've been working at home, um, putting together small pieces that uh, is being collated into a video, 
and uh, that will be shown in the December 20th service. Christmas Eve, you must sign up in advance. So um, the church family, people who are part of our, our usual worshiping body, will have the first option of the services. One is at 6.30, the next one is at 8 o'clock. We have 25 spaces. So um, please remember that that will start on the uh, 6th of December, and it runs from the 6th until the 13th for our church family. And then if there are any spaces that are left, they will be offered to the community at large. So remember that, that's coming up uh, very shortly, but remember that that has, uh, has uh, importance to you on December the 6th to the 13th, and you have the first option on those services. It will be a candlelight service. It will not be a communion service at either uh, 6.30 or 8. It will be a candlelight service, and uh, uh, each service will be exactly the same. So if you go to one, you don't have to worry that you have to go to both. Um, they're going to be the same service, one at 6.30 and one at 8. Um, if we are able to do it, we will also live stream that event so that um, people who can't come and would like to come can also observe the Christmas service at the same time as those who are gathering in the building. We are going to make that attempt and we'll try to, try to make that happen. There is a service on December 27th. So it will be an online service only, much like all the other online ones that uh, happened earlier in the year. And in church services will begin again on January the 3rd. So I think those are the things that I have here in front of me. And let's see if there's anything else. I think I've covered all the things that I have. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? No one is jumping up and down. And so, um, after um, the um, offertory music is played, you'll hear the doxology, and you're invited to rise as the gifts are brought forward, and they will be blessed.
them and use them, and we bring them to the also our very lives. Bless those lives and use us in whatever way we can as you take these gifts. Remind us of those things. Bless these gifts as you in Christ's name we say. something different than a dollhouse, though. They waited for Jesus to come again, but they didn't know how or when that would happen. And we still wait for him to come and to be with us. Like Jill was ready, 
He wants us to be ready too and to be prepared for the surprise. Now here are some things for you to think about. Advent is all about waiting. And today we live the candle of hope. Can waiting be a hopeful thing? Even though we all know it's terribly hard to wait, but hope comes when we're waiting for something good. Think about that as we hear together the words from the music of O Come, O Come. so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains quake at your presence. In ages past, no one has heard, no eye ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and deliver his elect from the four winds, 
from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know the summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with their own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know even when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. As the son of an artist, a visual artist, a painter, we grew up with an awful lot of art around our home. And I remember very fondly a book that was in our, in our family room with Norman Rockwell paintings in it. There's one picture of, of a boy on a stool beside a cop in a, in a soda shop, running away from home. His satchel beside him told the story. Or another of the artist looking in a mirror, painting his own portrait. Or another one of young love, a, a boy and a girl on a bench looking away to the sun and a little puppy dog behind him wagging its tail. Or the tattoo artist at work. Or a little boy dropping his drawers in the doctor's office waiting for his inoculation. Norman Rockwell was, a, was a, an illustrator who produced covers for the Saturday Evening Post. He drew those week by week and so on for that magazine. And each picture told a story, a powerful, gentle story. Another person that was talking about this artist said that Norman Rockwell is it's one of the most dangerous artists of the past century. He said, that might sound absurd, but Rockwell's overly cheerful, even sentimental style led many people to dismiss him as a serious artist and indeed referred to him as a, just an illustrator instead. And he suggested that even though he enjoys Rockwell's endearing style and, and portrait of what feels like a bygone era, it is precisely Rockwell's sentimentality that poses certain hazards, particularly when it's viewed not as sentimental, but as the ideal. Think about it this way. How many of us look at Rockwell's famous painting of family gathered around a holiday table or a family pray over dinner in a restaurant. And then we start to wonder why our family experiences don't quite measure up. No one is arguing in this picture. There's no debate over, over politics. There's nobody sulking because a, a favorite dish has been omitted or because there are no gluten-free options at grandma's table. Instead, it's a million bliss. Perfection. And it's little wonder that our experiences just don't measure up. Rockwell, of course, isn't the issue. Culture is our tendency to seek out ideals. The ideal job, the ideal relationship, ideal children, 
ideal homes, ideal holidays, and more. Now our longing for ideals is rooted in the desire to improve, to measure up to something, to, to be prepared to see potential, a vision for how something could be better. But this admirable and no doubt evolutionarily productive trait can easily turn aspiration into envy, and devolve from determination to improve to grasping for an ideal that no matter how unrealistic it is, undermines the reality with, with which we have been blessed. And that, I think, is the, the greatest danger of idealized pictures whether painted by Norman Rockwell, or created by advertisers, or somehow concocted in our own imaginations. They lead us to see what we actually have, and who we are, as being insufficient, and unworthy, and unimportant. And all of this comes to mind as we look at Mark's little apocalypse, the Gospel passage for today. Because while many read the passage and others like it as, as Jesus' predictions of the end, I think it can instead drive us back into the, into the present with a renewed energy to see the people and situations that are all around us as gifts of God that we are called to love and to care for. And notice, for starters, that there's no mention in this passage of the end of the world. No indication of final judgment, no, no call to flee the day-to-day -day realities and obligations and responsibilities of life. Only the promise that he, the Son of Man, is near. Indeed, if we recognize the times that are mentioned in this parable that is at the end of the passage, times like evening, midnight, and dawn, they are also identical to the times that are part of the passion story that are about to commence in Jesus' life. And then we realize that much, if not all, of, of what comes before, the of the sun, the powers being shaken, and so on, also connects with key elements of the passion narrative. Mark, in other words, isn't pointing us to some sort of future apocalypse, but rather to a present one, as Christ's death and resurrection change absolutely everything. So Jesus suffers all of the world, and all of the empire of death have to throw at him, and is raised to new life, and then nothing will ever be the same again, including our present our present situations. The church has held Advent as a, a season of active and vigilant preparation for rather than constant celebration of Christmas. And that's pretty good advice, but too often that counsel always devolves into argument about whether or not to sing Christmas carols, which, as you all know, I'm fine with, but also into discussions about when it's okay to put up a tree in the sanctuary, or, or scoldings about remembering the reason for the season. Our preparing, and the line between preparing and celebrating, is, is regularly overdrawn. It might be more of a practicing seeing where God is still entering into our lives and in ways that align with God's com coming and the vulnerability of the manger and the cross. And, and key to that would be to recognize that God comes to us as we are. Not as the people we're trying to be, or promised to be, or very badly want to be, but the people that we are. The families that we are. The congregations that we are. The communities that we are, the country and world that we are. You see, it's not so much about our ideals. It's 
room for improvement in all those areas, of course there is. But the best way to create energy to change is to receive the blessing that who we are now is a comfort beloved of God. Perhaps more than any of the other Gospels, Mark offers a distinctly apocalyptic view of not only Jesus and the Christian life, not mind you apocalyptic in the sense of, of the end of the world, but rather in the sense of pulling back the curtain of false hopes and realities in order to reveal God's commitment to enter into and redeem our lives and the world just as they are. Which may offer us the opportunity to be invited and to look around at those who are near us in church or in our families or in our schools or where we work or where we volunteer with new eyes. Eyes that see the people around us insofar. Well, they are imperfect, as we all are, are nevertheless meant to be loved and treasured, just as God loves and treasures all of us. We might also recognize that we will all be likely to be tempted at different points in the season to take various idealized portraits of our family or of our church or Christmas morning or services as the standard by which to judge our actual families and congregations and Christmas celebrations. But you know that won't work out very well this year. That's going to be very hard. COVID virus isn't going to cooperate with our idealized pictures of Christmas. It's going to be pretty hard to compare what you wish for with what is and what is possible. These comparisons, you know, are often the roots of, of that heightened depression that is associated with the holidays. So we may prepare to counter some of those temptations by committing to remind each other that God loves us all as we are, accepts us all as we are, and redeems us all as we are. Yes, we will all have room for improvement. And yet, at the same time, we are all enough. Totally and completely enough. We deserve love and respect now, as do those who are around us. Advent. Coming. Jesus coming. We begin the church here by looking ahead to the promise of Jesus' second coming. But Mark helps us to recognize that Jesus comes into our lives in many and varied ways. About that day and hour, no one knows, he says. Each of which corresponds to the first coming and the, and the vulnerability of the manger and the cross and an advent that continues to reveal the, the many false ideas that, that we bought into and that simultaneously affirm and accept the people and communities that we are even while becoming us as we move forward in faith to become the people of God that God has called us to be. Rather than direct our attention too far ahead, rather to the end of time or, or just to the 25th of December, perhaps we can offer an advent that directs our gaze to this moment now, imperfect, beloved, Fragile, important, flawed, yet beautiful. The very time and moment in which God chooses to meet and love and redeem us all. Here. Pressures, and we begin to notice the growing darkness. 
anxiety that is in our lives. We proclaim boldly each year that we will not let ourselves get so caught up in pressures and demands, and yet here we are, back in that same old trap of not enough, not enough time, not enough energy, not enough happening. And the very plans we weave become bonds that imprison us. Help us to bind ourselves to you, loving God. Help us to truly slow down and reflect on the many ways in which you bless us. Help us to drink deeply of your peace and hope. Remind us again of the most precious gift, loving connection with you. And may we cherish the people and the peaceful and hopeful moments that you offer to us day by day. We lift before you our joys and our concerns, lift our spirits, that we might remember that you are always with us, offering a healing touch and compassionate care. As we bow together in prayer, we remember those who are bereaved, who have experienced death in these past weeks. Seems like there's someone on television who's always experiencing this with the virus and then we also have folk in our own lives who are the progression of life who are saying goodbye to their families and friends and, and the friends and family are saying goodbye too help us to treat each other gently in those moments to recognize the limits that everyone has we ask you to speak your hope and peace to us day by day. We thank you for those in health care who are working so hard for us all. Disappointed and angry with us because we don't socially distance. Concerned, overwrought, not enough sleep, making sacrifices day by day. Help us to honor what we are doing by doing our part keeping our boundaries as we have been asked. No one can make us. We can only feel that it is the right thing to do. Be with us as we try to keep our boundaries. We pray for others who do not have what they need. We're living on small amounts of money these days, concerned how they're going to eat, they're going to pay their rent and other things. Help us to be generous. Help us to look at what's going on and realize it's not someone's fault. This is a virus. It's affecting everyone. Help us to pay attention to that truth and to treat each other kindly. Help us to be generous. We thank you for those in our circles of connection. Be with us as we treasure each other. Be with us as we honor each other. Be with us as we do the right things to keep each other safe. Remind us of those things day by day. We thank you that you are with us always, and as you answer these are our prayers, we offer ourselves and our very lives in your service, O oh God. Give us something that we can treasure each day, something that reminds us of your love and care extended and received. In Christ's name we pray. Please allow the words that will come from all you faithful to speak to your hearts and souls and minds this day.
to see the world today. God of the watching ones, the waiting ones, the slow and suffering ones, the angels in heaven, the child in the moon, give us your benediction, your good word for our souls, that we might rest and rise in the kindness of the company. Go now with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.